Welcome back to Code Emily. In this video, we're going to talk about how and why to use style components, my personal favorite way to style in React. So here I've spun up a really simple app using V. On the left, we have our code, and on the right, we have our browser. Inside of this app.tsx file, I just have a couple of H1s with some text inside, and then a div with some style wrapping three goblin components. And inside of this component, it's just an image with a div wrapping it with some style. What we're going to do is rewrite this using style components, and I'm going to show you some of the most useful style components features that there are. First thing to do, and this is the first thing to do when you use any external package, is to install it. I'm going to go into my terminal here, and I'm going to write npm i, which stands for npm install. I'm going to do style dash components. Hit enter. This will take a couple seconds. Once that's ready, if I go into our package JSON, I'll now see style components show up as a dependency here, which is great. Now we can start using it in our files. Import styled from style-components. And then I'm going to rewrite this h1 tag first. You actually can write plain CSS inside of your style components, while inline styles like so in regular React, you can't do that. You also can't add media queries inside of inline styles, which really limits you quite a bit. So I'm just going to call this style component header. So I'll do const header equals I'll type the word styled, which we imported right up here. And then this object, we can do dot notation with any HTML element. What I mean by that is I could do dot div, I could do dot p, dot h1, any HTML element that's valid inside of our JSX, we could do here. So since this is an h1, I would do style dot h1. And then the syntax would be a back tick. And I'll put our CSS inside of here. So since I'm converting this from inline styles to style components, It'll be a little bit different syntax because we have this notion of camel case within inline styles, which we don't need to worry about when converting to style components, which is great for a lot of reasons. If you search on the internet, what is the syntax for text align, for example, it'll show text dash align. You don't have to think about what the camel case version would be. What I'm going to do is just copy this, paste it in here. With our inline styles, we need commas because this is an object within style. But we no longer have an object. This is actually computed to a string, which is why we have this back tick here, which is really useful for other reasons that I'll show you soon. And replace the comma with semicolons. And then I'll also replace all the single quotes with nothing because we no longer need these single quotes since we're writing in CSS syntax. So I'll just replace this with nothing. And the last thing I have to fix is just switch this to regular CSS syntax the dash rotation rather than camel case. And now what I can do is replace this h1 tag with header. And now we can see in our browser that it computes the exact same way. Since the style was the exact same for each one of these h1 tags, I actually can replace both with this same style component. So I no longer have to write this CSS twice. So let's replace this last div with the style component as well. So what I'll call this style component is goblin wrapper, since this is a wrapper of all these goblin components. When we think about naming our style components, it's really important to name them something that's useful, helpful for later, so that when we go back to our files, we know exactly what is going on there. That's the same with functions, variables, all components, just not just style components. It's really important to name things with thought in mind. This is a situation where I'm definitely not taking my own advice when it comes to variable naming. I shouldn't have called this header because header is actually a valid HTML element. I should have called it something else because calling it header makes this a bit confusing, which is part of why variable naming is so important. Back to our scheduled programming. That actually wasn't even supposed to be a pun. <laughs> So I'll do const goblin wrapper, and this will equal styled, and this time I'll do dot div instead of dot h1 since this is a div. I'll do that back tick. Then I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to copy this, paste in here, and I'll just do a find replace again. And then I'll just replace semicolons with nothing. Beautiful. Then I just have to rewrite those into the correct syntax. Awesome, and then I can replace this div with goblin wrapper. We can see our JSX just got so much cleaner. It's so much easier to parse exactly what's going on here. Go into this goblin component and rewrite this one as well. So I'll just do the same thing as before, import styled from style components. And when naming this style component, I'm gonna call it styled goblin. 
The reason for this is because I can't override this other variable that's already called goblin. And I still want it to be really clear naming wise as to exactly what it is. So style goblin equals style.div, that back tick again. Just copy paste this. Perfect. Now I just replace this. So now all of our inline styles are rewritten to style components. We can see the benefits of style components already. Our JSX looks much cleaner, but there's a lot more we can do. One of those is the concept of adding CSS to a living component. What I mean by that is rather than just adding style onto a div, an h1 tag, what if we wanted to style goblin itself? Say we want this middle goblin to have a background color of blue, for example. I'll write the variable as middle goblin. And then I would do styled, and then in parentheses, I would write goblin here. So that's how you override a component rather than grabbing an HTML element. And this is the same syntax as before with that back tick. And I'll do background dash color blue. And then replace this goblin with middle goblin. You'll see the right isn't doing what we want yet. And that's because we missed an important step. If we want to add style onto a component that already exists, we actually have to pass down the class name attribute. So style components will take care of passing down this prop, but we have to receive the prop inside of the goblin component. So inside of here, I'm gonna grab the props input variable, and then I'm gonna add the attribute class name, and I'm gonna pass props.className our style component is automatically passing this down. And now we'll see on the right that the blue is now showing up for that middle goblin, which is exactly what we wanted. So this is how we grab other components and we put style on top of it or override style, but there's a few more really handy and helpful features that style components add to our lives, our developer lives. So the really cool thing how I touched on earlier is this backtick situation. With backtick notation, you actually can add variables inside of a string, meaning that now we can actually use variables inside of our CSS, which is incredibly helpful. So let's say in this header component here, Let's say that we want the background color to be green sometimes and we want it to be blue other times. So I'm gonna pass a prop down inside of header. I'm gonna call this prop background color. And in here, I'll write green. And this header, I'm gonna write blue. If I go into this header component, of course this header component isn't expecting a prop because we're using TypeScript here. It's not expecting a prop to be passed down. So an important piece of this is we have to tell this style component that we have a prop coming in. So the syntax for that is these little carrots and then inside of these carrots it expects an object. So we're passing down the prop called background color and this will be a string. So now you'll see this error goes away and we can use this background color prop inside of our style component. Inside of this background color portion, I'm gonna use the handy feature of template literals, which allows you to add any sort of JavaScript inside of your string. So it's dollar sign and then curly braces, and then inside of this dollar sign curly braces, we're gonna put a function where we get our props. This function expects as input props, and this will contain any props that we have and then it will return whatever we want to return. So we can return any sort of string here. And what we want to return is just the string that we've given. So what we'll do is props dot background color. And now we see on our right, green and blue displayed for where we pass down green or blue. We can do this for any props that we want to pass down into our style component. Say we wanted sometimes the padding to be 10, sometimes it to be another number. We could pass down padding equals Let's just say 20 for the top one. And then I'm just gonna add padding is a string. So we're passing down a string of 20. And I'll just replace this 10 with a variable. And also I'm gonna make padding optional. Therefore, we don't always have to pass it down. So I'm gonna say the same function as before. And I'll say props dot padding or 10. So what this is going to say is if it gives us a padding, it'll be whatever that is, or we'll give 10 as that default value. Now you can see the padding is a bit more on the top and a bit less on the bottom, 20 and 10 pixels. 
which is extremely helpful because now we can actually include variables and such and write JavaScript within our style components. With regular CSS and with inline styles, it's a lot more complicated to do things like this. The last thing I'm going to tell you about in this video is the concept of theming with style components, which is an incredibly useful thing. The way theming works in style components is with context, which actually have a video all about context that I'll link right up above if you're not 100% on how that works. But I'm going to show you context when using style components. What I'm going to grab from style components is the component called theme provider. It's the context to put at the top level of your project or wherever you want to use the theme, probably the top level, and we'll pass down a theme object. Wherever you pass down from the top, top level, everything in between that top level will have context to whatever you've passed down. For example, if I replace this top level div with theme provider, what I'll do is create a theme object. And inside of the theme object, say I want to make sure that all the text color is white and I want to pass down that that's what we're doing inside of our theme. Try to do object notation. <laughs> and then what I'll pass down here is just theme equals theme. We're just passing out a context of theme inside of our application. I'll replace this color of white with this theme color. And actually, let me replace it to the color black so that we can see the difference. So here I'm doing this the exact same way that I access this. The theme is going to be inside of this props object. I'll do passing down props and then I'll be doing props.theme.color. Oops, pros, not props. So now we'll see this color update to black because we're grabbing it from our theme. And if I change this back to white here, you'll see it update. And of course, this is a really small example of this, but you can use theming for anything that you want. You can use this for, say you want the padding to be succinct throughout your whole app. Say 16 pixels, eight pixels is what you want to be around certain images, etc. We can apply that into our theme. The important thing about themes, however, is keeping them very organized and not really letting them get out of control. So once again, really focusing on naming, making sure things are very clear to other developers coming into your project. I hope that now you see why I love style components so much. They can really help your application, simplify it quite a bit and keep you styling. <laughs> if you like this video, I have tons of other videos about React, etc. And if you want to learn more, Check them out. Make sure to like and subscribe if this video helped you. Helps me quite a bit. Let's help each other. Happy coding.